Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I want to share with you the process of uh, how I paint eyes uh, in uh, oil uh, paintings, in oil colors and um, uh, many people, many painters, uh, especially students of course, struggle with uh, uh, eyes and the forms, the shadows, the lights uh, in while painting uh, eyes and um, this is uh, very um, it's interesting because although eyes are you know the center of uh, figurative uh, painting um, the center of portrait painting uh, still many people do struggle to uh, paint them correctly to paint them in a way that creates uh, uh, really uh, a charm, uh, it's convincing and uh, realistic. So for those of you who are interested, stay with me. I will share some uh, tips and I will try to to so, to uh, give some attention to the mistakes that uh, many students uh, do, um, thus uh, to uh, help us paint uh, better uh, the eyes. Uh, here I will pay much attention more on the inner part of uh, the eye, the reflections, not so much on the surrounding skin area, like the eyebrows and the eyelids, but uh, mostly in the inner part of uh, the eye and what's going on in there uh, as best uh, as I can. Um, of course, uh, um, I'm just a painter, but uh, uh, as painters we have to understand that uh, the basic anatomy of uh, the human body, we have to understand that uh, eyes are just uh, uh, spheres, like uh, gelatinous uh, spheres that can uh, allow light to pass through them partially. Uh, we have to understand that uh, as uh, spheres uh, they have to be painted accordingly. So, not, um, and this brings me to the first, uh, of course, mistake that uh, many um, student uh, painters uh, make. And uh, this is painting the white part of the eye uh, as flat as uh, possible, uh, like both uh, sides uh, from the right and the left uh, side of uh, the, the iris are lit in the same way. In fact, uh, as a sphere, the usually uh, some uh, and a large part of the white part is in shadow, and uh, of course, although we call it. Uh, the white part uh, of the eye, still uh, um, we have to, to see that only um, some reflections on it are completely white and the rest of it is uh, uh, not uh, completely uh, white. So, um, as I said, this is a very uh, common mistake that many student uh, painters uh, make to just paint the white part uh, completely white, uh, thus creating um, a cartoonish uh, uh, depiction of uh, the eyes. Now here you see me already um, painting the, uh, the reflections uh, in the eye, and um, I want uh, here to uh, you to notice uh, something that is very very important. The second mistake, uh, actually, that uh, many uh, painters, uh, student painters, make, uh, and this is the abrupt transition between the the iris and the white part of the eye. Um, if uh, we really observe uh, the human eye, we will see that uh, uh, although it seems kind of uh, abrupt, uh, if we observe closely, we will see that uh, the iris, um, there is some slight transition, some blending uh, going on between the iris and the white part. And this is something that we as painters, we have to grasp to observe and uh, um, transfer this observation on our uh, painting. Here you see me kind of working on this uh, transition. I pay much uh, attention on uh, uh, this uh, transition because it uh, really does create some sense of uh, uh, realism, volume, beauty. So um, don't uh, do this very common mistake that uh, uh, many painters uh, do and just uh, paint the, the iris uh, uh, 
uh, with an abrupt finish, but uh, try to do some uh, simple basic uh, uh, blending between the iris and the white. Uh, I hope this. Um, um, I'm pretty sure that many of you are aware of this uh, and uh, you do paint these uh, nicely on your paintings um, but uh, it's just something that uh, I often see in many paintings and uh, I really wanted to um, to stress it out now one more thing that uh, and I think it's uh, it applies to so many other things, but it's very important and uh, uh, I'm never tired to, to talk about this, is to, to really uh, pay uh, our attention to drawing. Like you saw earlier on this video that uh, uh, I did a quick study, a quick pencil study on the eye that I was about to, to paint and uh, this is uh, really really helpful um, later on and now that uh, I am using colors to describe the volume, the, the realism of uh, the eye. Um, drawing is um, the pillar, I would say, of uh, painting, and uh, you really have to um, to practice drawing and uh, uh, don't skip uh, drawing because uh, it will uh, uh, vastly improve your painting uh, abilities. Now you can find I have on my Patreon page uh, some uh, lessons on uh, uh, paint drawing from life uh, and. Uh, I want to get this uh, opportunity to thank uh, so much my Patreon supporters uh, there uh, for their financial support. Uh, I upload um, some content exclusively there, some uh, courses and uh, lessons. And um, the most amazing is uh, <laughs> our uh, live stream. Uh, um, I'm um, using... Uh, um, my camera to connect with uh, my supporters, uh, my the patrons uh, there, and we get to know each other on camera and meet each other, uh, talk about any, uh, solve any issues and problems, and talk about uh, painting issues. So it's really really interesting, and um, this is my chance to say again thank you so much for your support. Of course, I want to thank uh, all of uh, you here on YouTube. Uh, people who are never, uh, um, <laughs> you are always very generous on your comments and uh, really, really thank you so much. Uh, it's especially it's moving for me when people uh, write how inspired uh, they become from uh, watching these videos, how helpful these videos are to them. So um, really, really thank you so much. and. Um, of course, feel free, feel free to subscribe and uh, like this video if you find this uh, helpful. Now, um, one more uh, tip that I would like to share with you on um, when I paint the um, eyes is that uh, uh, although um, may, although some eyes are just uh, brown or just uh, um, black, uh, dark. Uh, um, uh, in, in those cases I will uh, always add some cool reflections uh, in them. You see here on the uh, left eye how there are some um, blue grayish reflections on them. These uh, mostly reflect uh, the light uh, in the environment uh, that is reflected in the iris. It can be the sky, it can be the light from a room. Um, and uh, at the same, um, in the same logic, let's say, when the eyes are blue or um, green or something like that, there will always be some uh, brush strokes that are uh, warmer in the iris, and uh, thus you will be able, to, we will create this uh, sense of uh, uh, charm, uh, visual richness, and. Um, beauty that uh, eyes uh, have. So feel free to um, to add the colors that uh, normally you wouldn't imagine uh, adding, like uh, yellows, um, bright uh, blues, etc. And then blend them a little bit, see the result. 
um, and see how the the iris will uh, uh, become very beautiful. Uh, it's important though when painting the iris to to really see the shapes of uh, light, the shapes of uh, reflections and uh, transfer them. You see here that uh, uh, there is a window reflected uh, in the iris here and uh, um, Somehow I try to recreate these shapes, not as, uh, not perfectly, you know, not um, in a perfect uh, slavish, uh, let's say, way, but uh, just to give the, um, the sense of uh, the reflections uh, there uh, and uh, to transfer uh, from the reference uh, I have to transfer these relationships of light and shadow, the, these tone values. To, to transfer them of on my painting. I don't know if this makes sense, but uh, um, values are more important than color uh, in painting as well. Values uh, um, uh, do all the work and color gets uh, all the credit, as uh, they say. But um, so it's important to really observe, to really see in black and white in your mind. Uh, practice this, exercise this uh, muscle in uh, defining and uh, seeing uh, the tones and then transferring these relationships on our uh, paintings. It's really, really important and this will help us uh, really see how um, and paint the range of uh, light and shadows uh, that uh, is on our reference uh, to paint this on our uh, paintings. Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> I feel that um, I don't make sense, that people will not really understand what I'm talking about, but uh, I'm pretty sure that um, those of you who are uh, in who are serious about uh, painting uh, will understand even if uh, my uh, accent and my way of uh, use of the english language is uh, horrible so anyway welcome on how to paint a realistic portrait like the old masters course this course will teach you how to paint a portrait that is of high standards as those painted by the early Renaissance artists. My name is Antonis Kosmadakis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. I have been studying Byzantine, Medieval and Renaissance art since 1992 with degrees on painting from the Athens School of Fine Arts and the San Francisco State University. This course shows the technique of painting a face step by step in the traditional way of the artists of the early Renaissance, using specifically two works by the great Botticelli as our reference. By the end of the course, not only you will be able to understand the principles of using egg tempera as a medium to paint a portrait, but you will also be able to apply these various techniques on other mediums like acrylics and gouache. More than that, you will be given tips on drawing, colors, the pigments and the brushes. If you want to improve your painting skills and use traditional techniques and concepts to enrich your artwork, this is a great course for you. All you need is passion for painting and a willingness to practice on this exciting way of painting like the old masters. So come join me into this course and see how vastly this can inform your artistic vision. Thank you so much. Stay creative. Um... Again, for uh, seeing uh, in you know the tones and try and being able to to find which uh, shapes are our brightest, which shapes are our darkest, etc. Uh, also, for this uh, learning to draw from life is really really important, and um, it will immensely vastly improve our uh, skills. Now. Um, I haven't talked at all about uh, the uh, the materials here, how I use the materials. Um, I very rarely use uh, canvas, probably um, I, I have some studies on my on my channel where I paint on canvas, uh, but it's rare. So here I'm using a canvas 
that I have prepared uh, lightly with uh, an acrylic gesso and uh, this uh, after that uh, um, I've colored the gesso in this pink brownish uh, color um, and then uh, I have uh, used um, I've transferred my drawing uh, on that and then I've begun with painting first the darker facial features uh, not very precisely in a kind of uh, loose way way and then uh, painting the flesh uh, part uh, so that I will have an idea of um, uh, placing the values in a correct way inside the eyes and uh, after I've, now that I've uh, almost completed the inner part of the eyes I will uh, add some uh, uh, highlights on the skin <clears throat> and uh, I will uh, do some uh, corrections there um, as I said I'm using uh, oil and uh, um, for uh, what you need to know here about oil is that uh, the process is uh, mostly moving from uh, uh, thin uh, thinner layers of uh, painting um, le color that is much uh, thinned down with uh, turpentine uh, oil at the very first uh, stages of the painting and uh, as we proceed with painting uh, we will use uh, colors on our palette uh, that uh, um, contain both uh, some turpentine oil to uh, be workable uh, along with some uh, linen oil or some other kind of uh, oil appropriate for uh, painting um, this uh, will uh, um, help the colors uh, um, be placed nicely uh, on top of each other I mean working from thin to to fat to fatter uh, layers of color uh, they will help the colors sit in a more uh, nice organic way um, and um, uh, this way I am able to just uh, finish this uh, study in one sitting um, we can call this also a la prima the, the, paint, the br brushes that I'm using are uh, um, not very hard uh, brushes because uh, I want to work a little bit in detail they are uh, brushes that uh, uh, can be used for tempera as well and um, usually we use uh, harder brushes when we paint uh, in oil but um, depending on your style and uh, what you want to achieve you can use also uh, more soft and more uh, um, and brushes that are for uh, for temper Now, one uh, thing that I have uh, uh, observed from my experience is that many times our uh, portraits uh, um, seem a little bit uh, flat, uh, the color is a little bit uninteresting. So one tip that uh, I want to share with you here is by the end of uh, painting a portrait I like to add some, uh, um, some glazes, let's say, or some brush strokes that are um, high in color, uh, high in chroma, very saturated, and uh, paint these uh, brush strokes uh, in strategic, uh, let's say, places. Uh, these uh, highly chromatic uh, brush strokes will add some vividness, some um, life to the portrait, and this is something that uh, you see me doing uh, here. Uh, and these brush strokes uh, are always uh, very surprising to me because of their power of uh, um, of uh, making the portrait more alive is uh, amazing. So little by little, this uh, study comes to an end. Um, if I have to make a conclusion here. 
uh, is um, I would say that uh, uh, drawing is always so important and we should never uh, abandon practicing and exercising uh, this uh, making sure that we understand the uh, how the eye is a sphere and uh, has to be lit accordingly has to be painted accordingly and uh, then some uh, tips on how the iris uh, is uh, um, not something very abrupt shouldn't be painted very abruptly uh, from the white part uh, or um, how the reflections inside can be of various colors so that uh, will add to the visual uh, beauty the visual experience of uh, the the viewer so um, these are my tips these are the things that uh, uh, i take into attention when i'm painting uh, really <laughs> Forgive my English. Thank you so much for uh, um, for uh, um, ah see I forgot the word for taking up with me. From even though my way of um, communicating is uh, poor, but uh, really thank you so much. Um, feel free to um, subscribe to this channel and um, to check my patreon uh, page it's always so nice to uh, to get to see uh, you there and uh, uh, to have the chance to communicate uh, on camera let me know in the comments uh, below um, if you have more tips about uh, painting uh, eyes and uh, what uh, uh, what uh, helps you painting uh, the eyes, the reflections, if you have any tips, I will be glad to read those comments. So thank you so much. Uh, stay healthy and uh, creative. Be in the studio, and uh, I will see you soon with another uh, tutorial. Bye.